Good morning, and, and welcome to MathForBreakfast.com. I, I don't, I don't know if it's it's morning when you're watching this video. It could be uh, three in the afternoon or, or or midnight or something. But but um, I, I say morning because you know it's breakfast morning and morning it's, you eat breakfast in the morning. <laughs> All right, but, but before you shut off the website, um, here, here's the deal. You're not you're not here to learn how bright I am. You're here to learn. Uh, about factoring out a common monomial, and and this is this is the foundation of factoring, all right, uh, or at least factoring polynomials. And and uh, why why would we factor a polynomial? And and, and well, uh, the answer is factoring polynomials, something like this polynomial. You got a clump of numbers and letters and plus or minus another clump of numbers and letters and plus or minus and a clump and a clump and a clump and a polynomial. So why would you want to factor that? Well. The basic reason for factoring polynomials, or the basic application, is to help you solve more advanced equations. You, you might have solved an equation like, you know, 7x plus 5 is equal to 32, and then you solve for x. Okay, boom, they got x. But, you know, more advanced equations can represent um, uh, more advanced concepts, like profit. I've got an equation that represents my profit, and I want maximum profit. And, and so I will solve this equation for maximum profit because that's good, <laughs> right? Sign me up. Or, or you might, you might have a problem. For instance, uh, tomorrow on your math test, all right? And so you, I gotta get me this factoring thing down to succeed. So here we go. First of all, factor. Here's an instruction. What does factor mean? Well, uh, factor. It, 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 it's, for instance, if you have the number 12 and, and someone says to factor it, what that means is to take. 12 and split it up into a couple of numbers, or two or more numbers, that multiply back. So when you take the 3 times 4, you, you get 12. So you, you take something cute and you mess it all up so you can get back to where you started, and you probably had to pay somebody to, to teach you that. <clears throat> no, a, a factoring. The factoring is that you've taken a number and you split it up into two or more other numbers that multiply to get back here. So it's, it's representing the same amount, just in a different way. We want to take this, factor it, to represent it in a different way, which will help us solve a problem. All right, well, here we go. Bear with me, put on your safety harness for the beginning of the problem. Step zero, yeah, really, step, step zero. Read the instructions, I, N, S, T, for abbreviation on instructions, and look at the problem. An abbreviate at with an at, at symbol there. Um, yeah. Step zero. Read the instructions and look at the problem. Why did, did that man <clears throat> waste any breath on telling me to do what I'm doing, which is reading the problem, or uh, reading the instructions and, and looking at the problem? Well, head to my website, mathforbreakfast.com, to, to get a further explanation on step zero. But really, you got to look at the instructions, all right? This isn't... Hey, erase it. Please erase 8wx squared minus 12wx to 7. No, it's factor it, all right? So it's important to recognize the instructions and to look at the problem. Right now, I have what's called a binomial, and, and uh, so since it's a binomial and not a 12, I'm going to do a different set of steps to factor this than I would to factor the 12 and split it up into 3 times 4 and go from there. So step zero, read the instructions, look at the problem, and go to this website to figure out why step zero is so critical. But here we go. Let's dig into the problem now. Step one. All right. Look for a number that divides into all of the coefficients. I'm going to abbreviate that coefs, all right? Because coefficients, that has way too many syllables for me to write out. So coefs, coefficients, this 8 and this 12, those are the coefficients of this problem because they're the number in front of the monomial here, that clump. Got me a clump right here, got to get it removed. Yeah, so, and then the 12 is a number in front of this clump, and so that's the coefficient there. And so you want to look at these two uh, coefficients and, and, and decide. Is there some number, look for the biggest one, that divides in, into the 8 and the 12? And, and the answer here is, you know, the answer to this is 4 divides 
into 8 and 12. He divides into both of them. Can you see me? Hello, down here. Yes. Notice I've, I've come into the kneeling position before the problem to, to pay respect and reverence and, and, and to basically to plead for, for help in, in doing this problem. No. Um, four divides into 8 and 12. So we've got to keep this in mind. Four is going to help us out later. Now, step. Step. Again, remember to breathe. Yes, like any good um, exercise video, don't forget to breathe and remember to get water frequently. So step two, this time, look for variables, bars, I'm going to abbreviate that one, bars, look for variables, which are letters, like the W and the X, look for variables, okay, that are in all the terms. All right, this is a term, plus or minus, another term, plus or minus, another term. All right, so just like we looked for a number that was in all of the coefficients, now we're going to look for letters that are in this term and this term and this term. has to be in all of them. All right, so here we go. Put a little bullet point here. W is the smallest power of w in all, okay, all the terms. Let me put a little note up here. Look for smallest power. I got a little squishy there, my apologies. Look for the smallest power, all right? I've got a w and I've got a w and they're both to the first power, so the smallest power of w is just w. There we go. But there's more. I know, you're raising your hand going, I, I, I see more. I, Good, good. Bring it down. All right. Yes, there is an x. Both of these terms have an x. And the smallest power is the x squared. All right. So x squared is the smallest power of x in all. All right. So we've just found a few things. We found that 4 divides into 4, uh, sorry, into the 8 and the 12. We found w is in both terms or all the terms. And we found x squared is the smallest power of x that is in all the terms. Now, pretend like this board is continuing on. And unfortunately, uh, the <coughs> board foundation ran low on money. So I'm going to have to erase here. My apologies. But keep in mind, we have the 4. We have the w. And we have the x squared. And we are now going to continue with this problem. So step 3. I'm going to write step 3 over here. Step 3. All right, which is write out the items from step one and step two and put some parentheses. All right, so from step one, we had a four. From step two, we had a w and an x squared. And now I'm going to throw in some parentheses. There we go. Bam. Ah, and I made the parentheses about as wide as the original problem. It may be a little bit narrower, okay, okay, because we are factoring and things will get more condensed. So step three, write out the items from step one and two for wx squared. And put some parentheses. Now here's the grand finale. Here's where it all comes together. All right, step four. Fill in the parentheses using, why yes, how do I fill in those parentheses? Using multiplication. Mult. All right. I'm going to rewrite this so that your notes flow systematically. 4 W X squared parentheses parentheses. And we start using multiplication. What does that mean? Well, in my original problem, I need an 8. So here outside I've got a 4. 4 times, that times is multiplication, get it? So 4 times 2 would get me back to the 8. Ha! Ah. <clears throat> and then I need a W, but I already have a W. So a W times, I don't need to multiply any more W's here, leave it blank. X squared, I have an X squared already out here. X times, don't need to worry about any more X's here, so I leave it blank. So I know now that 4 W X squared times a 2 gets me back to 8 W X squared. Bam! All right, for simplicity, bring this minus sign on down. And remember, keep it simple. And you ask yourself the same question. 4 
sorry, this more, four times one gets me to the 12. Well, let me tell you, boys and girls, bust out your calculations. Four times a, oh yeah, it's a three. Oh, oh, kind of a little wobbly three. Put on a seatbelt there, buddy. Four times three gets me back to the 12. Now, I need a W up here. Already got one. Don't put any more W's here. X to the seventh. Well, we've got an X squared out here. And what this means is, as you recall from, from exponents, X to the seventh means I have seven X's all multiplied together. Over here, I've got two X's multiplied together. How many more do I need over here? Let me hear you. Five, five. Yes, exactly. X to the fifth. Because X squared times X to the fifth will get me back to X to the seventh. I used multiplication to figure out X to the fifth. Remember also, when you're multiplying the same base, they're both X's, you actually add up the exponents. Two plus five gets you back to the seventh. Another way of thinking of it. All right, are we done yet? How do you know we're done? exactly sure why I'm doing the Charleston here, but, but um, I know I'm done because I have something, 4wx squared, times something else, this binomial, and that was the idea of factoring. Started with something, split it into two things that can multiply back to give me that something. Now, is it completely done? Well, no. <clears throat> In any math problem, any math solution, you need to do the final step. Again, I'm writing out another, uh, uh, re repeat, repeating this step here so for your notes will flow. I am now putting the grand finale, the final ditches, upon the problem, and that is box the answer. Why do you box the answer? Really, you have just spent, I don't know, 30 minutes or five minutes cranking out a solution. Hopefully you've written it all out. Writing your answer on the bottom of your shoe or on a piece of toilet paper does not count for partial credit, but most teachers will give you partial credit if they can see your work. However, you want to be sure that when they conclude their essay reading, they see your answer, hence the box. All right, we have just learned that we can factor out a monomial for wx squared from this binomial. A common monomial came out, and that will make the rest of your factoring problems a lot easier. Um, go on, next lesson, I have one more example of factoring out a common monomial, if you need it. Then we move on to trinomials, a few special polynomials, and you will be factoring masters, or masteresses, or masteresses. <clears throat> anyway, keep clicking, have fun.